I have another storage and organization type tip to share and also a journal flip through. So this is, um, I just, I redid my image binders lately, cleaned them out, rearranged, and ended up making this one. This is just one of those uh, cheap post-bound scrapbook albums. I think I got it at Tuesday morning, probably in a kit with some other papers and stuff. And I just covered it with, this is one of my drop paper sheets. And inside here, I have waxed papers, napkin appliques, and transfers. And what this is are um, waxed papers, napkin appliques, and transfers. <laughs> All right. Uh, what I mean by that is wax papers are papers that I have put wax, daddy vans, wax on, which makes them very nice and transparent and um, makes them great to work with. You know, it is possible for that, um, the wax on that paper to transfer onto other papers if they sit next to each other. So I like to keep all my wax papers together and my non-wax ones, you know, are in their usual spot. So that's what that is. And then the napkin appliques are the napkins that I have put uh, Yes Paste on and you know did that whole thing and then transfers are, are just what it says transfers or gel medium decals and I've got videos for all of this I'll try to remember to put links to them or the little I card things but I wanted to show you how I store those things it's like I store a lot of my other things like this just sheet protectors and a binder um, but this one I just chose this big scrapbook binder because I had it and and that's why I chose it. I don't have enough of these 12 by 12 sheet protectors to hold everything and this particular binder has the two posts in it and they don't really line up with the um, the way uh, three hole things are punched. <laughs> so I had to improvise. <laughs> I just used regular sheet protectors and then attached them to the post with a binder ring. So, you know, you can make it work. And it's, you know, it's fine. It's just to hold stuff. It's good. So I've got some, uh, these have, I think these are all waxed. They have wax on them. So they're here and there. And I don't mind the wax papers on top of each other. I just don't want them with all of my other regular papers because, you know, if you don't want something with wax spots on it, then you have to keep them separate. So that's why they're here. But touching each other, they're okay. So that's what these are. Um, they were wax experiments. Some I've used pieces in other projects. But that, that's all it is. Some wax tissues and napkins. And then we get into the appliques. These are all of the uh, Yes Paste that I put on napkins, which also makes them translucent and fun to use. So, and again, it's okay if they touch each other because I have sprayed all of these with a, cr a clear Krylon, which also helps to make them easier to decoupage with since you can reactivate paste with water. So, um, yeah, it's okay if they touch each other now. But before I had put Krylon on them, if they touch each other, they would kind of stick permanently. <laughs> but they're good now. So that's what all these are. And I just really like having all this type of thing in this book because um, it's just another one of those things you, it's good to flip through for inspiration, if nothing else. These are some gel medium decals. <coughs> that are ready to be used. And then these are pages that I've kind of made with some of these things, but they aren't really complete. They're backgrounds that need something, you know, experiments, just kind of unfinished mad scientist experiments, I guess is what they are. And there's just all kinds of different you know, some with decals, like I, clearly I was going somewhere with that. I just never got there, but it's still going, <laughs> so I can add to it. Um, same with that. So, yeah, these are sort of, I guess it's more like, you know, works in progress, stuff that wouldn't really need much to be a finished thing. I just haven't really been inspired to finish them. 
so they're here and they're also good for collaging and stuff so that was a collage in the making that didn't quite make but I can still finish it and then these are some of my um, original colored doodles um, these are available to download in my Etsy shop and I color them in so that you know I can give you a little uh, color inspiration for them and I upload those pictures and then these are the, the colored ones so I keep them in there and then this also has some of my other experiments the fusing fused papers paper towels cereal bags all the different little things I fused and there are videos for all of these these are some of the cereal bag fusings and these are cereal bags with oil pastels in them and these are different fused paper towels with wax paper and deli sheets and I've made some books out of these but these are just extra extra pages so this is just all um, weird papers you know not paper papers anything that's just a weird non paper paper <laughs> or something that has been altered in some way it goes in this binder and uh, this is just it, this really is one of my favorite places to flip through now just for ideas and inspiration so there's that and I also when I was putting this together I realized that I probably haven't flipped through this I'm pretty sure y'all have seen, if not all the pages in here, you've seen most of them. I've shown them in other videos, but I've probably not showed them together in this journal. This is one of these Strathmore journals. It was the Bristol Smooth. I had originally intended to use it as a doodle journal, but then I decided I didn't really like doodling this big all the time, so I abandoned that. And then I kind of started putting backgrounds in it. Some of them I created in the journal. Others were like jelly prints that I just really, really liked. And I didn't want to cover them up. I didn't want them to be a background to something. I just, I like them like they are. And I want to keep them that way forever. You know what I'm saying? You know, cause I'm, I'm a background girl. I admit it. I like, I like my backgrounds. <laughs> and there are times when I don't want to cover them up. But when you put them in a your regular art journal that you're working in sometimes they kind of stick out and, and look like an unfinished page even though you're content with it you like it it's just got that mm, unfinished look because it doesn't go with the rest so here's what you do you just make you a journal of nothing but backgrounds so that your backgrounds they feel at home in this journal with all the other backgrounds now you can add foregrounds if you want to but then those are the freaks that stick out like a sore thumb <laughs> Because this, this is the background house right here. <laughs> so that's kind of where this is. Just, um, you know, that was doodled on some waxed paper uh, for no reason, really. And then these are just some background experiments and things that I've tried and I liked. And so I, I glued them in. This one I liked a whole lot because see it folds out. And then on the inside, I had an excess of purple images, so I just did me a purple collage. You know, that's good. And then that was a, uh, a doodle that I colored. I'm thinking I don't remember the details on that one, but that's what it is. And this is a, it's like 8.5 or 9 by 12, 9 by 12 uh, journal. So 8.5 by 11 sheets you know they have area that shows and I think maybe in some cases I've left it white but in most cases I either glue down a, a another background that I'm not in love with you know like a drop paper or just you know something like that to coordinate with it or like in this one I painted around it black so that it looks finished and see, this is when I thought I was going to doodle in this and then decided that that was really just a pain and I didn't like it. Paper's great. I just didn't like the size. That was a doodle that I colored. That was a Daddy Vans collage. I created this, this piece on its own and then stuck it in here on top of a piece of drop paper. And that was another Daddy Vans collage. And I think I put napkins around the border for it. 
And then I think most of the rest of these are probably jelly prints that I like. I just like that jelly print. I like to draw around the edges. I used a white paint pen to, you know, go around the edges. And I loved it. And I love these. And I don't want to cover them up, at least not at this moment. I might later, but right now that makes me happy. I do not want to cover that one up. This is a uh, doodle I did on some sheet music, and then I colored with Prismacolor pencils, and I really, really love it. And that one I just really liked. It was fun. It made me happy. So that's another jelly print I want to keep, and that one. And this was a weird kind of drop paper background. And then this was too, but then I used a stencil over it. And that was a stencil that I had cut myself. It has uh, since, um, it is now deceased. You know, God rest its soul. I, it was like the first stencil I ever cut myself. And um, it had some integrity issues <laughs> in some areas and it, it came apart in two or three places so <laughs> I'm gonna have to recut that because I love the image <laughs> but I really liked how how that looked and I liked it on this background and that is just another jelly print that I've you know traced around and some of these jelly prints I've added some more color you know I use those uh, pit pen markers because they're blendy and just made them more colorful and that was a jelly print of, oh, these stencils were some of, um, some more of my hand cut stencils. And then over here, this was just a vintage piece of paper. It was a poem that someone had written here, and I, I did a transfer over it. This is a gel medium decal transfer thing, I think, if I remember right, that I did over it. And I, I also watercolored the paper, and I just loved the way it looked. And I, I didn't want to glue it down because I liked the back. Because the back, on the back of her poem, she wrote a recipe for neighborhood bean soup. <laughs> I just might make that someday. I don't know. <laughs> so I did it as a fold out. And then I had some scraps of another doodle that I didn't like. And I, I painted this page to kind of mimic this. Um, so that's that's what that's all about. Oh, and this I had a there was some sheet music on the for the background and the name of the song is Wahoo. So <laughs> that made me laugh. <laughs> and I have not I've not waxed my pages as you can tell. And these are just more jelly prints that I don't want to cover up right now. So they are being proudly displayed as as their own little works of art. That was another uh, doodle that I colored, like that other one with the rocks, but this one I did on a phone book page. Yellow pages, I think. And that was a collage out of strips of drop paper. I'd use this brown packing paper on my work surface, and it just ended up really cool. Tore it in strips, glued them together, and that's what I got. Another jelly print, and the last jelly print, and then, well, I don't even know why that's all there, but I've got more room to grow. So that is my background journal, where um, my background pages that I don't want to cover up, they're much happier here <laughs> than they are in other journals. So there's an idea for you if you're like me and you don't necessarily like covering up your background sometimes, just put them in their own journal and you will all live happily ever after. The end.